Good morning. We all are a talkative bunch. I like it. I like to I like to hear everybody talking and catching up. That's that's good. I like that. I like that atmosphere. Good morning. I'm I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're here. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, mothers. I saw I saw all the the the, the plants out in the in the entryway there, so I'm that's for your mother's just small, small token of, of, our, of our gratitude for you all. Uh, I'd like to share a few announcements this morning. Uh, the women's Bible study is going to be on Saturday. Um, so that's at noon. Bring your lunch. And uh, then they'll go straight into the book, which is... It isn't supposed to be this way, finding unexpected strength when disappointments leave you shattered. And I've heard great things about the last one, and they're looking forward to the upcoming one. Uh, there's going to be Wednesday evening service at 6.30, and we are also in the process of updating the online directory, so you can send your uh, pictures or information to office at cfcnas.org with any updates for the directory. Um, and you all do an excellent job of sending prayer requests and other things to pray about. So we ask that you to continue to keep up that good work and sending all those uh, prayer requests our way so that we can pray for those and everything. Um, let us know how we can continue to unite with you in prayer. Let us know how we can support you in that way. So thank you so much. And now we are going to uh, transition into a time of worship. Good morning, you hearty crew braving this uh, weather out there. Let's stand and worship the Lord, shall we? Should I fear man when you made the heavens? Why should I be afraid when you put the stars in place? Why should I lose heart when I know how great you are? Why should I give up when your plans are full of love? Oh. 
may be seated. A little more traditional now. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to him. sing his praise today.
finally, we're going to sing about some about getting alone with our Savior. We have the great privilege of prayer. Let's praise him, shall we? I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear calling on my ear The Son of God discloses join with me in a word of prayer. Lord God, we are grateful for this day. Even, even in the midst of this weather, God, we're grateful for this day that you have made, and we're grateful for it, and we bless your name. God, today is a day when we especially want to lift up our mothers because we're grateful for them, Lord. Your scripture says that greater love has known than this, than he that would lay down his life for his friends. And not, that's what our mothers do. Our mothers lay down their lives for us. They sacrifice for us, give up for us, God. And let it just be more than today when we acknowledge and celebrate our mothers. But today especially, we're grateful for them. Lord, we want to be receptive to what you have to say through Pastor Juan today, Lord. We want our hearts to be open we want our ears to hear. We want to accept and receive your word that is preached today, Lord. God, we want to lift up our community. We want to pray in honor of you, Lord. And we want to hear, accept, and grow in this season, Lord. We're grateful for you. We're grateful for what you have done, Lord. And we continue to just take one step. God, if we can just help us to take one step towards you today, God, at least in this, in this journey we're on together. God, I ask that you bless this time together. Fill this place, fill this space, Lord, and help us to be receptive and to listen to what you have to say, Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, I pray. Amen.
Thank you, Chad. Whoa. I first want to say thank you to Phil last week for filling in and for doing such a fabulous job. How many of you agree that he did a great job last week? I, I, I thought he did a great job, and, and thank you, Phil. Uh, you know, last minute, I called him up on Saturday, and I don't know what had, ha what had happened to me on either Thursday or Friday, but I mowed the yard, and I started getting really congested, and I didn't know what was going on, and then when Saturday came, I was in bad shape, and I said, man, this is not good. I, 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 you know, Kelly said, do you have the COVID? <laughs> she goes, do you have the COVID? <laughs> I said, no, I don't have the COVID. And I, I don't know. I, I didn't know then when I told her that, but I wasn't going to confess it. <laughs> so I went to the clinic and then they checked me out, you know, did the swab test. Uh, within four hours, I got the results back saying, no, you're, you're, you're negative. You're good. And I said, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So he's not done with me yet, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. But thank you, Phil, so much for doing such a great job. The, the music was great, man. I was worshiping with you guys uh, on, you know, online, and I just, I just, I, I text Jonathan, and I told him, Jonathan, man, thank you so much. You guys sounded fantastic up there. And, you know, there's, you know, I just want to encourage you guys that who are instrumentally gifted, um, you know, there's, other instruments that can be played up here that can accompany the worship team. Um, just, you may want to talk to Phil first, though. I'm just, <laughs> he's in charge of that department. Um, but anyways, happy Mother's Day. All you mothers, thank you for coming and, you know, uh, braving the, the weather and you're here today. But I just want to acknowledge, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, but I know most of our senior mothers are not here today because of the weather. And so I'm just going to ask this one question is, who is the youngest mother here today? Who's at the age from 19 to 25? Raise your hand. Nobody. All right. All right. 25 to 35. Raise your hand. Wow. Wow. I better stop, huh? <laughs> I'll stop there because I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, like I said. We'll stop there at 35. I, I think that's a safe place to be, right, Jonathan? I think so, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, happy Mother's Day. And church, I can't tell you enough, you know, just how important mothers are to the family structure in this life. In fact... If, if it weren't for mothers, none of us would be here today. If it weren't for mothers, none of us would be here today. But I'm here to encourage you this morning that I believe with all my heart that God has gifted us with some very special moms in our lives. And I just want to say thank you to you parents who serve the Lord and fear the Lord and are you know, in the house of the Lord and who are worshiping the Lord, even from home. And you're not, maybe you cannot make it here, but, but you're worshiping with us online. Thank you for just the way you reverence God in your time. You know, throughout Scripture, we, we hear about women, godly women, that serve the Lord with valuable characters characteristics and godliness in their life. Names that have been pinned on this wonderful book, the Bible. Man, what, what privilege it is, you know, in a culture especially where women are not considered, you know, pretty much, they're considered nobodies in the society. Back then and during this time, Women were just kind of like an afterthought. My wife says, check your microphone. Leave it up, she says. Is that better? Can you guys hear me? All right, good. Wonderful. 
And, you know, these wonderful women in the Bible, they had characteristics about their life. We read of women in the Bible that served the Lord with all their heart and soul, that were there with Paul to to supply his every need, with Jesus to supply Mary and Martha. How many of you know Mary and Martha? But then there's some people like Timothy's mom, Eunice, or grandma Eunice, and Lois. That's the grandma. Eunice is the mother. Women like that that instilled valuable, valuable lessons in their children's hearts. And I want to just share with you, church, how important you moms, how important your role is at home. Your role at home is probably the most important role. It's not the teacher's responsibility to raise your children. It's not the neighbor's responsibility to to look out for your children when they misbehave. It's not grandma's responsibility to raise your children. Moms, it is your responsibility Just like dads, it is your responsibility to support mom at home when she needs your support. It is vitally important to see a united forefront at home. Can I get an amen? Amen. Because a house divided amongst itself, it will not stand. When mom and dad are divided amongst themselves, the house is divided. There will be chaos. They'll run to dad because he compromises mom's, mom's, uh, mom's orders, uh, mom, mom's orders, and vice versa. They run to mom because mom, they think mom's a softy. They can get away with anything. But it's important for us to instill these wonderful values that are found in the Bible in our children, and it all begins at home. It all begins at a very the very age, when, as soon as you hold that baby in your arm, even before then, you've got to take care of yourself to take care of this little baby that's in here. Amen? you got to eat properly. you got to sleep properly. you got to exercise. you got to maintain your health in order for you to have a good, healthy child physically. But the most important part of, of life is not just in the physical a- attributes, but it's in, the, it's in the spiritual, it's in the core values that we instill in the, in the fabric of our children's lives. And I, this morning, I want to give you some, some, nine, some ten characteristics that I have found that, that are vitally important for mothers to instill in their lives. And not only in their lives, but also in the children's lives. And it comes from reading the Word of, reading the word of God. And I need to pause right now for a minute because I want to pray. There's something, I just love praying. And I just love taking the message to the Lord because sometimes I come up here on my own strength and I realize that's not, I shouldn't do that. And I sense that I'm kind of leading myself and not letting the Holy Spirit lead me right now. So I'm going to pause and I want to pray. Because I want God's Holy Spirit to lead me this this morning. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you, O God, speak, O Lord. Encourage your people. Encourage mothers. Lord, Father, encourage fathers. Encourage us. Encourage all of us. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray, O God. Amen. I want you to know that I have found that that these nine character, though these ten characteristics, keep see, keep saying nine for some reason. Maybe I'm only supposed to give you nine instead of ten. But I'm going to give you, and they're short ones. What I have found in my life, my upbringing, with my personal life at home, I believe what one of the things that allowed me to become the man of God that I am today was because I witnessed my mom pray and read her Bible daily. 
And I believe that a woman, if you want to be a woman of character, like a woman found in the Bible, you have to have this characteristic engraved, instilled, embedded in your heart and mind that no matter what you're going through in life, that you're going to take the time to pray and read God's Bible daily. There is no way, moms, that you are going to find the wisdom that you need to govern your house and lead your children forward in life without the Word of God. Amen? Now, I know this is not easy because at times, at times, life can have a lot of conflicts, especially when you have more than one child. And sometimes one child can be like having 10 children at once in your house. But I can't, I can't tell you how important it is for you to find a moment, a place of solitude, a place where you can run and hide, a prayer closet where you can run into and pray and say, God, today I need your grace because there's no way I'm going to make it. I'm about ready to strangle one of these kids and I'm about to hit my husband over the head with a bat. You need God's grace. You need God in your life. You need the Word of God to help you, to lead you, to instruct you, to enlighten you, to give you the words of wisdom to convey to your family so you will not have to go to prison for life for slaughtering your your family to pieces. Because at times, that's what it feels like. Right, ladies? Right. I grew up in a house of eight children. I can tell you it was mayhem in my house. We had three bedrooms, one bath. That's it. Eight children, all needing to use the restroom in the morning to go to school. (laughs) How many of you watched the Waltons? (laughs) It was kind of like that, but worse. That's that's pretty PG, okay? (laughs) But the Bible tells us that we are to raise up our children. And Proverbs chapter 31 gives us a perfect example of a woman, of what a godly woman looks like. You all know the the chapter. I'm not going to read it aloud to you because I have some verses here for you. But in verse 28 of chapter 31, it says that this woman... That this woman who gives herself to prayer and to reading God's word daily, their children see these things. They see the character that this that this that this lady has in her life because the Bible, the Word of God, has made her to be this way. The Bible says that when these children, the children wake up in the morning, this is the children will arise and call her blessed. Her husband will also praise her. I'm so thankful that I have a wife that that wakes up in the morning, reads the word, prays in the morning, reads the word when she comes home, prays at night with me. And I'm so glad that my mom, I used to hear my mom pray, pray while she was at the table. And I'm so glad I used to see my mom read her Bible because it taught me. I said, Man, maybe there's something in that. Maybe there's something in that. She's a, she's a single parent raising all these kids. How is she doing it? I want to know. Maybe there's, some, maybe there's something in there that I need to know that will help me. Prayer. And reading God's word, sometimes when everything, when life is a mess, when life is a mess, sometimes we just need to pause, be still, know that he's God, fall in his presence, say, God, I need you today. Open the word and read it, and you'd be surprised what God's word will do for you how it will bring peace, how it will bring you, give you wisdom as to how to handle certain situations at home. Number two, one of the things that I've learned about a godly mother is that she has learned to trust in God for all her needs. Again, raised up in a home of eight, 
One mom raising us all. One source of income. My mom, we didn't lack for anything. Somehow, some way, she, she trusted in God. She believed in God. She said, God is going to help me. God is going to provide for me. And I know because I took it to the Lord in prayer, and I gave it to God. And the Word tells me, God's Word tells me, that I have yet to see the righteous bake for bread. I, God will supply my every need that I have. And I used to turn to my mom and say, how are we going to do this, Mom? She goes, trust me, I have left it to God. And there are many women in the Bible here. One, is, one specific lady that I know of, Hannah, who cried to God. She was barren. She couldn't have a child, but she cried to God. She went and she cried every day. And even at times, she would go to this corner, and Eli, the, the, the observer, the, 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 you know, the priest, he, he saw her praying, and he saw her praying one time in the corner, and she was sitting there, and she was kind of like moving her lips, and Eli said, this woman is drunk. She's drunk. What? Did you, did you get drunk this morning, woman? And she says, I'm not drunk. I'm praying to God for a child. And before you know it, that very next day, Eli told her, you know what? God, don't worry about it. God heard you. Go home. She went home, and that very next day, she conceived. The Bible tells us that that God allowed her to conceive a child. She prayed to God. She took God's word at his word. He, she believed in God. And women, I know that times are tough for you. At times things are, especially if you're a single parent, I know that things are tough for you. But I want to tell you that there is a God that we serve that is able to do abundantly more than what you can possibly think or imagine. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. At times when you don't know when, how to pay the bills, when the bills are coming in and you don't know how, how you're going to make it, man, I don't, this is not adding up, God. This is not adding up. The bills are this much. This is how little we have. How are we going to pay for that? And then all of a sudden, God shows up and he shows off and he provides for you. How? Because he sends the ravens to you to provide your every need. How God is able Anna, the prophetess, in Luke chapter 2, she cried to God. She says, I want to see the consolation of the coming Messiah. Let my eyes see, Lord, don't let me die until I see the Messiah. She cried and cried. This woman was was a widow. She lived. Man, I love this woman right here because she lived at the temple. She was there every day, faithfully praying and seeking God's face. And God honored her request because she took it to the Lord in prayer. She took it to the Lord in prayer. And not only that, because she believed what the prophecies of the, that, that were told before of the Messiah, she believed in them. She believed in God's holy word. Do you believe, church? Do you believe in God's holy word? When times are tough, moms, when things are going difficult, when the children are acting up like monsters, do you take it to the Lord in prayer or do you, do you, or you allow the devil to dismantle you, to cause you to fall to pieces? I can't tell you how important your role is at home, mom. For your children. I grew up in an era where dad went to work and mom stayed at home. Mom was a disciplinary. But when dad was out of the picture, mom went to work and my sister took up the role of mom. I called her little mom. And I used to fear my sister more than I did my mom. She was mean. She was real mean. (laughs) But I was too fast, she couldn't catch me. (laughs) Listen to how important your role is at home, moms, for your children. Listen to what D.L. Moody wrote. He said, "The the impression that a praying mother leaves upon her children is lifelong. 
Let me say that again. The impression that a praying mother leaves upon her children is lifelong. Perhaps when you are dead and gone, your prayers will be answered. You may not see the fruit of your labor. You may not see your prayer answered. But in God's timing, he will answer those prayers. Number three, a godly mother who prays and reads her Bible daily, the word of God daily, is a generous mother. You cannot (laughs) read this Bible and not be convicted of being greedy. Because God is a generous God. He gave his one and only son. And God even tells us in his word that, yea, you know, look at the lilies in the field. They neither toil nor their spin. Yet Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed as like one of these. One of the problems I had with my mom was she was too generous. I I told you the story some time back, but some of you have not heard it, so I will share it with you. My mom, we lived right next to uh, probably about a mile away from the from the railroad yards, and a lot of transient people used to get off the, the, the train, and they would come up our road. And my mom, being the compassionate person that she was, the good Samaritan that she is and was and still is, she used to feed those transient people. And I used to tell her, stop! They're going to they're gonna make this a hobo hub. You're going to have people from all over coming. They're gonna, the word's going to get out. Go to this house and they'll feed you. They'll, they'll even let you stay in this little shack that they have in the back of their house. One day, well, this young man, I was outside and this young man was coming up the road and, and I was watering the plants and he says, hey, can I fill up my container? With your, with, your, with your water hose? I said, yeah. At that moment in time, my mom came out the front door and she looked up and she saw this young man filling up his container. And she said, son, where are you coming from? Or where are you going? She says, ma'am, I'm going to try to make it to Los Angeles. Did you just get off the train? She, she said, yes, ma'am. It was obvious. It was, it was dirty. And my mom said, you're probably hungry, huh? He said, yes, ma'am. I said, hold on a minute. I'm sure that some of you are going to be familiar with what I'm about to say. My mom went inside the refrigerator, grabbed a, the, the pack of bologna, a loaf of bread, a mustard, and, she went, and then she grabbed a half of that government cheese, cut it in half, walked out there, and said, here, son, sit down and eat. Where at Los Angeles are you going? The young man told her. He says, hold on, I'll call my pastor right now. The pastor drove, came in, picked him up, drove him to Los Angeles. I can't tell you, for three years in a row, my mom received a bouquet of roses on Mother's Day and a $100 bill. I believe with all my heart it was from that young man. My mom was generous. You can't read this Bible. We can't pray to God and read the Bible without being generous. We serve a giving God. And he loves people that are generous with their time, talents, and treasures. The fourth thing I found of a godly woman when she prays and reads God's word is not only does she trust in God, but she's obedient to God. She doesn't care what the news is saying, how to raise your children. She doesn't allow the counselor or anybody else to tell her how to raise her children. She doesn't listen to just anybody of how to live her life and raise her children and be a godly mother. She does it by praying and reading God's word, by putting the Bible to practice. The life goal of a godly mother is to obey the Lord and leave all the consequences to him. There is no need to worry, she says, because I serve a God that is able 
more than able. He is more than able. I trust my Lord. Therefore, if my Lord tells me to wait on him, I'm going to wait on him. Number five, a mother who gives herself her life to prayer and reading God's Bible, you'll find that she's a forgiving mom. You can never do wrong in mom's eyes, amen? I don't know how many times I made my mom cry. I don't know how many times I've done wrong in my life, but yet mom was always there to forgive me, and she loved me unconditionally. How many times, how many of you mothers have said, no, you did this last week, I'm not going to love you, get away from me, don't touch me, don't hug me. But when a child comes to you with tears in his eyes or in her little eyes and she extends those little arms up to you, they just melt your heart, don't they, mom? Come on, grandmas, you too are involved. They melt your heart. You cannot help but to pick them up. Why? Because you have the heart of God in you. Why? Because you listen to God. Because God forgave you, therefore you learn, you know how to forgive others who have wronged you or have hurt you. A woman that reads the Bible and prays and seeks God's face first and foremost in the morning is a woman that is able to forgive some wrongs. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 tells us, it says that be kind to one another, tender-hearted. Let me just, tender-hearted. I'm not going to say tender-hearted. I'm saying tender-hearted, soft, sensitive, empathetic. Tenderhearted, forgiving each other just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. How can we go before the Father and ask Him to forgive us if we cannot forgive others? Number six. A mother who prays and reads her Bible daily is a serving mother, is a serving mother. Just, Jesus said, I have come to serve, not to be served. You mothers are do it all. Oh, my goodness. I applaud you. You pick up after us. You cook food for us. You, you, you. You do, the, you do all the, the shopping of food for us. You balance the books. You correct us when we need correcting. Which is not an easy thing to do. Some of us need a little kickstart, huh, in the morning. Some of us, get up! That's both. <laughs> My wife says, is that your wife or your mom? I said, that's both. <laughs> it's not easy being mom. It's not easy. It's a 24-hour job, especially if she still has a second job. Sometimes we do need to get kick-started. But a um, a woman that reads her Bible and prays to the Lord daily is a serving mother. And Jesus said, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give him his life as a ransom for many. Praise God for mothers. Number seven, a mother who, pray, who prays and reads her Bible daily knows that our God is a God of order. Therefore, 
She too needs to live an orderly life. I can't tell you how many times my mom, my mom used to literally, once a month, she will rearrange the house. Once a month, she rearranged. The couch was over here, now it's over there. The tap is over here, now it's over there. But she was constantly reorganizing her house, the house, and keeping, trying to keep things in order. With eight kids, that was tough. Kelly, my wife, is a, she's very structured. There has to be order in our house. You stand there. I didn't say over there. There. <laughs> That's not where it goes. That's not where it goes, okay? The big spoons go in the big section. The little spoons go in the little section. And that's not where the, and that's not where the cloth, the, the, the tablecloth goes, and that's not where the napkins go, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's nothing wrong with order, friends, because I want you to know that God, we serve a God that is a God of order. How many of you believe that? Amen, we do. He's a God of order. As in fact, 1 Corinthians, you say, where's scripture in that? I'm glad you asked. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 33 says, For God is not a God of disorder. If he's not a God of disorder, then what is he? He's a God of what? Order. He's a God of order. He's not a God of disorder, but of peace as in all congregations of the Lord's people. There's got to be order in the house of God. There's got to be order in our life. And right now, we, he dwells in, 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 in a dwelling place that is not made with hands. He dwells in us. So there, this is his house. So there's got to be order in this house right here. There's got to be spiritual order. There's got to be physical order. There's got to be mental order. you got to learn how to keep yourself in order. Because God does not dwell in a place that it's out of order. He's a God of order. Amen? Number eight, a mother who prays and reads her Bible daily is an encourager. She's got words that know how to speak to you, how to melt your heart and say, you know how dad, when dad walks in there, mm, and then mom walks in there and she just, they understand mom. What comes out of these lips will either build up a child or will destroy a child. There's two things in life you can never take back. Time and the words that come out of your mouth. Right. Scripture tells us that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18.21. Proverbs 12.18 says, There is one who speaks like a piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the, but the, tongue of the wise Promotes health. I didn't put this on my notes here, but Scripture also tells us, our Lord Jesus says, that we will give an account of every idle word spoken from our mouth. Number nine. A mother who prays and reads her Bible daily knows the importance of discipline. You want to see a spoiled child embarrass a mother is a child who is, goes without being disciplined. 
Scripture tells us in Proverbs 25, 15, a rod and a reprimand impart wisdom. But a child left undisciplined disgraces its mother. I know that some of you are maybe say, wait a minute, that we, we, I, we don't do that in my house. I would say, how, I want to know how you're doing that because I want to learn how to do it. Scripture also tells us that if you if you beat with your if you beat your child, he surely will not die. I can't tell you how important it is to impart discipline to a child's life. God disciplines those that he loves. Number 10, a mother who prays and reads her Bible daily is a mother who loves unconditionally. Because if she knows the Bible, she knows how much Jesus loved us and how he died and suffered for us. In fact, Scripture tells us that love, that love, that there's nothing greater than the love of God, than, than God's love and love in a relationship. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. There's a lot to be said there, right? I can preach on that for a long, long time. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when, the, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly. But then face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully. Even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, love, abide, these, thing, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Let me close with this last statement from our first president of the United States, George Washington. He says, my mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. How many of you can say that about your mother? All I am, I owe to my mother. I attribute all my successes in life to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I received from her. George Washington. I, Mom, if you're watching, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. If you have a mom right now that's living and she has been a wonderful example for you, let me encourage you to go tell her that you love her. Let me encourage you to go Show her that you love her. If she's been a good mother, tell her she's been a good mother. Teens over here on the side. If mom has woke up in the morning, washed your clothes, put food on the table for you, helped you throughout your work, throughout your day, has given you things that you really don't deserve, say thank you, mom. Thank you. Thank you. Even the little, the smallest little details 
in life. Say thank you. Let us pray. Father, I pray this morning and I thank you for the godly women that you have raised up in the church. For those women that are making a difference in children's lives. The Father, I, I pray this morning for them. I pray, oh God, when their arms get tired, will you give them the strength to get things done? When the problems seem to arise, Lord, and there seems to be no way, Lord, encourage them and make a way for them. When they can't see ends meet, Lord, Father God, will you pull those two cords together and tie a knot so that they will meet, Lord? Lord, I pray that you provide for the, the home that is that right now is in need of your peace, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh God, that you would help each and every mother, each and every woman that has child, Lord Father God. I pray that you, O oh Lord, will bless their home. Help them, Lord Father God, as they rear up their children in your ways. Give them words of wisdom. And Father, I pray for the, for the husbands. I pray that they will rally behind their wives and say, I am here to help you. What can I do to support you? I love you. You are my partner. And I am so, and I am so glad to have you. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, God, for giving me a wonderful wife. I think most men need to say that, Lord, a little bit more. And so, Lord, I pray this morning for all the mothers who are at home watching. Lord, I pray that you be with them, Lord God. Help them to get through their days. Lord, there are moms right now who wish to be here, but because of their age, because of an illness, because of the weather, because of the things that have been so heavy in their lives, they were unable to be here. So Lord, I pray that you be with them today. And Lord, and help us, Lord, Father God, to be grateful for the mothers that you've given us, the godly parents you've instilled, you have given to us in our lives. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, I want to pray for the offering. Um, so last week, I wasn't here. So here's last week's offering, uh, tithe, this week's tithe. I want to ask God's blessing upon this offering. He's been so good, hasn't he? He's provided for us. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we give, Lord Father God, from what you have given to us, we give our tithes to you, Lord, bless it. Use it for the furtherance of your gospel. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you bless the gift and the giver. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Would you stand, please, for our doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Be blessed. You're dismissed.